people say, oh, you're a documentary photographer. I don't even know what that means. Oh, you're a photojournalist. I don't know what that means. I'm rarely am published in journals. And they say, oh, well, then you're a fine art photographer. I said, no, I'm not. I'm not a fine art photographer. I aspire to be a fine photographer. My name is Bruce Davidson. I've been a photographer ever since I was 10 years old growing up in Chicago, on the Chicago streets. I feel that my work has an accumulative effect. I'm kind of like a serial killer. I like circuses. I like that magic that's created. Jimmy Armstrong, who was a dwarf in the circus in 1958, and I really became friendly with him and close to him. And that work was published. As I remember, uh, there was a, a gang war and the Daily News newspaper wrote it up. I took the subway and I went down and I found the group. And I took pictures of their wounds, bandages, and that that started me off with them, and then the rest is history. Brooklyn Gang wasn't about violence, but it was about feeling and the sense of, of their deep depression and anxiety and fear, and at the same time, incredible vitality. The young women in that group were beautiful. The guys were great looking. I remember a photograph I made of Benji standing against a wall in a kind of a little candy store. And I saw such incredible tension and anxiety in his face. He almost looked like an old man. I see some of the pictures of me and it just tells me how, how sad I really was, you know? I mean, that's the way I see them, the pictures, you know? Like a, like a lost 15-year-old kid. It was pretty much all, always my, my practice to offer pictures. And even in the Brooklyn Gang, I would give them pictures. And it was a way of seeing them, and, for, and a way of them seeing me. And so I was able to be invisible almost to them, because they were secure with me being around with my camera. Uh, because they were very depressed, and they were very angry, and they were very poor. And there was nothing for them in that community. And I wasn't there to um, judge them. It was about these kids, who were like any kids, unattended to. In the civil rights photographs, Time of Change, I, I guess I was naive enough because I didn't know how violent the South really was because I was from a white boy from the Midwest. What, do, what did I know about civil rights, you know? Uh, but after four or five years, uh, I began to catch on and become sensitized. And then 100th Street in the early 50s was con considered the worst block in the city in terms of housing. And the way people lived and survived and thrived and raised their families and tried to keep their place really nice, you know? So while I didn't have any agenda, they just felt good that someone wanted to see them. The subway was relevant in 1979. It was full of graffiti, it didn't run well, it was unsafe, and I felt compelled to go underground. It didn't run, it was unsafe, full of graffiti. So that gave me a direction that I was going to document and photograph and be in. And also, the subway could be beautiful. And at times it was sexy. At times it was sensual. At times it was grim. You know, it was anything and anything that I wanted to, to tap in on. That's how it inspired me. I could see, wow, that's like a Japanese painting. I was always aware that I might be attacked from the rear on the subway. And actually, I was. <laughs> New York Magazine asked me whether I would like to go with a group of subway undercover police uh, policemen who dress and act in such a way to precipitate a robbery. 
this perpetrator came over to take my camera. But the backup police are in the car with me. They look more like a thief than the thieves. Billy, I think his name was, he immediately arrested the guy that was uh, um, mugging me. So, so it's really not what it looks like, but it's what it feels like. It was always about color and how color expressed itself in the meaning of the subway at that time. I'm basically a black and white photographer, but that can change and depending on what I'm doing. In the subway, it just called me to experiences in color. I was using Kodachrome uh, 64. It's a slow speed film, but I chose it for its fidelity and its strength and its, and its beautiful palette. I use uh, filters, no filters, flash, no flash. Uh, there was a variety of technical ways I photographed the, uh, at that time. Subway is an aesthetic experience. I'm not there to prove anything, but to show the multiplicity and layers of life in the New York subway at that time. It was a beautiful experience. It was like I was on a voyage of discovery. I could, I, I didn't need to go to the Serengeti Plain. I could photograph the animals right there in front of me, and they were beautiful. Okay. Emmy, I'm ready for lunch.